put in the six speed Tremec T56 Magnum in the Fox Buggy Mustang. This is the, uh, the hydraulic slave unit that goes for the hydraulic kit with these with our transmissions. Because this car's got the hydraulic clutch kit in it also. With the quick time bell housing. You just gotta take your time with putting the transmission stab one in. You never want to be in a rush in this. You don't want to force things. A little alignment pin that goes in the slave cylinder, you gotta line that hole up in there. This is a spacer. Make sure our cushion measurement is fine so your slave cylinder gets retracted like about that far so you have room to push on the fingers of the pressure plate. And make sure you get your slave all the way back. Make sure your transmission's in line. And then just work her in. There's two alignment dials on these transmissions that line up with the bell housings. One on each side. Sometimes I'll use uh, two longer bolts just to help with the alignment. Put them in finger finger tight, finger loose. I mean, all right, we have alignment. Now you can start putting your hardware in. So our alignment dials are already in there. Now it's gonna be a little bit of resistance from the slave cylinder pushing back on the transmission. That's okay, it's expected. Then you go ahead and take the longer ones out. And use for alignment. These two upper ones are a little tougher to get to, especially the one on the passenger side top. I'll show you how to get to that one. Top one up there in the very top, I always put that one in a, it has a little clip that holds the vent line. I always put a piece of hardware, the correct hardware in place of that, because it's so hard to get your hand up in there to, to work the bolt in. So let's go ahead and put that in before you put the transmission in. That way all you gotta do, the bolt's already there, doesn't go anywhere. Usually a little short socket with a some type of swivel in the end. And then a couple extensions. It's okay to be away from your work. Let the tools do the work for you. I usually try to alternate my bolts. So you're not just tightening on one side, just so you keep everything even and straight. Sometimes if you got to, you can lower the transmission just to get a little extra room. For this upper one, it's kind of tricky. And the hard one's in. <coughs> All right, now we can put our isolator mount on. Go ahead and raise her up. And she stops.
When you're putting these transmissions in, you get the cross numbers in. Also, I check the clearances around the tunnel, make sure everything's clear. This one here did have a couple of uh, contact issues. So, but sometimes you may have to do some adjustments with the tunnel. If you gotta take a hammer, take a hammer. Usually you shouldn't have to. This particular car here we do because the motor is actually raised up about three quarters of an inch. All right, here we're using a six speed cross member. This is six speed on these Fox bodies. Maybe we'll try when to get this uh, cross member back far as you, if you want. You can. There is uh, some spacers here. You can try to go with a big one, a little one, and the other big one. Go ahead and put it in. Loosely put your bolts in. This one over here, to get the correct angle, you're gonna have to use the spacers, but always check your angle of your, of your transmission. You usually you have a good true surface here on the back of the transmission. There's also a surface here, um, which you usually can't get to now because once the ice layer is in place, but if you have all that together, you can always go out reference off of here, or if you have a good flat surface on the front of the bell housing, you can go in that area to get your correct angles. You're gonna use two quarter inch spacers. You throw a half inch. All right, then you get all your hardware on and really tighten everything up. This particular one is a lot closer because the engine's lifted up on this one. And that completes the hardware install of the transmission. What's next is you have all your, uh, get all your wiring for your backup lights, your reverse lockout speed sensor, and the cable for the speedometer. We're gonna put the speedometer in there. So we, it comes with this little plug it just kind of caps that off there. So we're going to pull this uh, plug out of there. And we don't need that no more. And we're going to take the speedo. That's the speedo right here. And we're going to put a gear. This car here in particular has a 27 inch tall tire, 355 rear end gears. So it's going to take about a 19 tooth speedo gear. So we have a little O-ring. Goes on there. Put a little speedo gear. Make sure you get that. And if, if the cable seems a little long, you can just take a little cutting wheel. You can just cut a little sliver off that or come back here. However long, however much you need to take out. Just remember, you can't add, so be careful of how much you take off. Uh, we got a little clip. So make sure you get all the way on there. Make sure she's nice and close. Get a little tug, spin around we got to. Make sure she stays in place. Ain't gonna hurt, spin around. Keep on spinning. Go the other way if you need to. Just want to make sure everything stays intact. And you can go ahead and put it in. Make sure it's in all the way. 
take the supplied hardware that we supply with the kit. And it's a little quarter inch. This transmission's already been filled in with a, with an ATF, regular ATF fluid for now for the break-in process, but after you get about 500 miles, it's, you know, you, you want to switch it out and put in whenever you, you desire. You know, it's the, the best transmission fluid is the Tremec supply transmission fluid. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it. You don't have to go crazy with tightening all this stuff, because you gotta remember, this is aluminum threads. Okay, you're over there. Okay, it looks like we got 45 and 3 sixteenths. That's good measurement for a drive shaft. All right, we're gonna put the, uh, the clutch master cylinder reservoir on, and it's real simple to put on. You have this little bracket right here, and you can put it on, it's basically, see these, it's got these two holes, you can put elevation wherever you want, and it goes on to the master cylinder studs that come out of the booster. And you can put it on either side. It don't really matter what side you put it on. But in our case, we're gonna put it over here, a little bit further away from the motor. So you put it, position it right there, and kind of then, then all you have to do is grab, this is your line going down to your master cylinder, catching a reservoir. So this is the reservoir that goes on there, on these uh, two, the supplied hardware that's on the bracket. So you kind of want to just guesstimate where you're going to need to make your cut at. So we're going to cut it about right here. So I always got to remember, you don't want this traveling uphill. It will still go down the mass cylinder since it is below the reservoir, but usually it'll flow a lot better if it's running downhill. So we're going to go ahead and cut it right here. That cuts our line. We're gonna go ahead. This is now the time where you can put your clamp onto your hose. And here, there we go. All right. And we slip our clamp on. And you just stick your reservoir on there. Now you don't have to go crazy and you tighten that, just enough for the hose to make a seal. So here's the existing nut. And just put that back in the stud and that goes through the master. You kind of want to get this bracket about as level as you can. All right. And that completes the install of the reservoir in a master cylinder clutch. The hydraulic clutch is actually completed now. Where there is one other thing that if you have If you have a uh, cruise control, factory cruise control on, this, on your Fox body, no matter what Fox body it is, Thunderbird, Fairmont, LTD, et cetera, et cetera, you'll have one of these uh, little clutch switches that kills the cruise control. When it, you press the clutch in, it releases this switch right here, actually opening the circuit, which is killing the cruise control. The existing bracket on this actually is in the way of the rod going to the master cylinder. So the original bracket looks similar to this, but this is the supply bracket we have, which is actually an extended piece. So it'll work around where the clutch rod goes down, which is right here. So now this button here is actually, what makes contact with this switch here is our quadrant piece that you add to the actual clutch shaft itself. 
So we use the existing hardware. So the existing, the old one, you just cut that off. You use the existing that goes through. And the studs are long enough to bolt back on. Because there's two studs that run right through it. And there's two holes on a bracket inside the pedal assembly. So put the sign, just that on, stick it in. Put your two and put through the other two holes, put your nuts on. Go ahead and put this on. This is just one screw. So to put this thing on. All you do is uh, slip it on. It's got a there we go. It's got a little hole right there. This piece right here slips on, tighten that, and you're good to go. Now this is adjustable. So if you're pressing your clutch in and it's not killing it, you just might want to adjust it down. So or if uh, so that way it has more travel to come out and extend. If it's uh, not engaging when you have the clutch not depressed, that's when you adjust it up and tighten it. And that concludes the Fox Body Hydraulic Kit.